Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Senator Vanderwall, for sharing your United Way story, too. Uh, I'm Christine Gregg. I serve as the House Democratic Leader, and I wanted to spend a few minutes talking to you about some other policy areas that we need to look at to make sure that we are supporting uh, our families that are in, that fall under Alice, uh, and, and really lift up all families in Michigan. Uh, for me personally, when I was in college was when I had an opportunity through, it was actually a scholarship program to work with the local county health department in the women, infants, and children's program and actually got to go out and work with families that were trying to raise their young kids uh, on very limited dollars. That was a real eye-opener for me at the age of 21. And then I worked in Chicago for a while, and that was my first introduction to United Way, uh, where we raised funds to help. But it wasn't until I came to the legislature and really worked with United Way of Southeast Michigan and saw the program, saw the data that was behind where the resources should go, that I became an instant fan of the United Way's work. So I thank you for everything that you're doing. Um, it's just, it's so important, all the partners that go into this work. And this report, is an incredibly valuable tool that can help inform um, these important policy conversations that we absolutely need to have if we're to move this state forward for everyone. And it shows us in, compel in compelling detail the challenges that Michigan families are facing. You know, they're facing it and just, just trying to get just trying to get by, to have some financial stability for their families. And it demonstrates that we have serious systemic um, issues and challenges to address if we are to ensure that every family who's working hard and playing by the rules can sustain that good quality of life here in Michigan. So the basic cost, some, I want to just go over a few of the details of the report. The basic cost of a household expenses, it's increased by 27 percent between 2010 and 2017. And that's for a family of four. And it's increased 26 percent for a single adult, despite a low rate of inflation nationwide, 12 percent from 10 to 17. So over 60 percent of jobs in Michigan pay less than $20 an hour. Yet the wages needed to support the Alice household survival budget is $30.64 for a family of four. Let me just review that again. So 60% of jobs in Michigan paid less than $20 an hour, but yet the Alice threshold is $30.64 for a family of four. We should really work on that really work on it. So the statistics and information that get trotted out, you know, to celebrate this comeback that we hear so much about, you know, things like the number of jobs or low unemployment, they don't really speak to the facts that families are facing and that families are still struggling in this economy. Because, it, you know, it's not about the number of jobs, it's about the quality of the paycheck. And that, you know, because of stagnating, stagnating wages, um, the percent of Michigan families who can't afford their most basic needs, health care, child care, food, rent, and transportation, has actually increased by 6% since 2010. And that's why we've continuously advocated for policies that level the playing field and put working families back in the driver's seat of this economy. We have to think about families and people first and getting them to work. They drive the econ economy, they create the jobs. So things like restoring the earned income tax credit to its pre-2011 levels, that's a program for working families. So like fighting for the minimum wage, the original version that more than 400,000 Michiganders signed on to in last year's ballot initiative that would bring up the hourly wage to $12 an hour by 2022, which has now been turned back to $12 an hour by 2030. How is that helping our families that need to try to get up to $30 an hour to just survive? So I am proud though, however, that we've maintained the Healthy Michigan Plan to ensure access to health care for nearly 700,000 Michiganders nearly all of whom are in Alice households. But we need to protect their access to care by repealing recently enacted work requirements that make it harder to keep that health care. Because studies have shown that greater barrier to health and steady employment 
is a problem. We've got to remove barriers and not put them up if we want the stability for our working families here in Michigan. You know, I believe good government protects its citizens, especially the most vulnerable among us. So as our population continues to age, like myself, and boomers in particular, like myself, uh, continue toward retirement, it's critical that we're providing the support they need to live without worry or fear. And it's, it's, it's crazy to think that someone who worked hard their entire life should then be unable to afford the prescriptions they need or to keep a roof over their heads. And one of the most important things we can do in the legislature is to repeal the pension retirement tax. And I know my colleagues and I on both sides of the aisle are working hard to make that happen. So for those already living on a fixed income, that tax was crippling, and we have to make it right. So if there's one takeaway for t from today, it's that more does need to be done. Policymakers from both sides of the aisle need to come together, put people at the center of those policy decisions, decisions to really move this state forward. So clearly, as we've heard already, 43% of families struggling to make ends meet demonstrates the need for real policy change. We need to ensure that our tax, labor, and education policies are setting families up for success. And not, you know, they have to be stable to be able to prosper. That's the first step, and that's where our policy needs to go. So we're working on it in the House. My House Democratic colleagues and I have, have proposed a lot of different le legislation that we're hoping to work with our colleagues across the aisle to make sure that we are moving our families forward. So again, I thank you for inviting me to come in and speak today. Thank you for the work that you're doing. And let's remember those working families when we develop policy uh, initiatives. Thank you very much.